Hello, I'm Denise. Welcome to my channel. I'm running away from home, which just basically means I'm on hospice and um, taking a little while to die, which is interesting. And uh, today was a better day than yesterday. Had oxygen all night, all day. Storms came, they weren't bad. I didn't have to call Jason to come start the generator. Bruce called me twice today. Yesterday, he called me once to warn me about the storm coming. And this is the man who always asks me, what's the weather? And we have the same weather app on our phone. Huh. And he says, I see you got some weather coming. So what that means, Bruce, is that you know how to use the weather app on your phone. You just choose not to. You choose not to and choose to irritate the hell out of me. Anyway, it was nice because Carolink, the durable medical equipment company, the DME, that provides my oxygen, called him. And he told him, the, the person on the phone, uh, I'm in the middle of the bay, of the Saginaw Bay. I can't do nothing. You should call her. Well, your number is the first one. Nope, don't call that. Call her. So, he told me about that today. No, he told me about that yesterday. And yesterday wanted to know did I have, you know, to get a, that I needed to get a hold of Jason to let him know about the storms and he would have to come over and do the generator. <laughs> Sorry. And um, that had already done. I said, Bruce, we had a plan. We had a whole plan in place. No need to worry about it. Everything is fine. Then he came, he and Captain Dan came down, back down here to home, so that Captain Dan could get the medications for his drugs. And Bruce called me, said, we're in Sylvester, and I'm just wondering, are you doing okay? Is there anything you need? If you need anything, I'll just come right over there and bring it to you. And I'm like, nope, I'm good. I'm absolutely good. And I actually wasn't. I did need a few things. So I called Jason, and he came over and hugged me, gave me kisses. Just love that boy. Just love all my boys. Um, he takes really good care of me. And I'm all over being mad at him for opening up my package of Tostitos. No, not Tostitos, Doritos. <laughs> and eating them without saying anything to me first. You know, it's a little different because I can't leave the house to buy the things I want. Well, I could probably get myself in the truck. But getting out of the truck and going into the store and then getting back in the truck and coming all the way home, unloading the truck, I'm tired just thinking about it. I've just tired myself out. I've just worn myself out. Anyway. been watching these mediums on YouTube there's not really any questions I want to ask you know I've asked before what can a person who's dying do to get ready for the, the transformation um, nobody really says anything and that means that I have to say in the channel chat where you ask the questions of the medium that you know I'm on hospice and that's more information that I'm comfortable giving to a group of strangers. <clears throat> Having, you know, the history of that I have online. I made a big lie once and told everybody that I was dying. What can I say? You know, we all make mistakes and for all for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and I never do that anymore. I do not lie online. I do not. 
I do not pretend to be something that I'm not anymore. It's just not worth it. And it's just immature. And, and screaming for attention, which is what they call thirsty. So now I've taught you thirsty and crunchy and salty. And you all knew, already knew about Karen's. Having a lot of trouble with this right eye today. Um, feels like the, whatever, the, the abscess, the boil, cyst, it's on my eyelid. It's getting ready to pop. And won't that be pleasant? No, it will not be pleasant. It will be messy. I need to get some, uh, God's dressings. They don't have to be sterile. But I would like to use a clean one for each eye. I'm talking about a 3x3 three three or 4x4. Four four. And I know they sell them at the stores. But I can't get to the store. Even with... A canister of oxygen, it would be too much. But anyway, again, I've been watching these mediums and I don't get my questions answered because, you know, they don't really have questions. Any messages from my mom? Her name was Myrna. Any messages from my brother Randy? He died when he was 33. Bates. Back in the days when AIDS was a new thing. So I left Bruce in March of 1998 and moved down to, packed my car and moved down to um, Missouri. And uh, that did not go well. It did not go well. But you know, every experience you have can be e either the worst thing that's ever happened to you, you can look at it that way, or you can look at it as a learning experience. So while this was going on, I was spending a lot of time. I had a two bedroom apartment. Man, I miss that place. I could afford it too. Um, I lived in a two bedroom apartment and the one bedroom I used as my office, so I had my computer desk there with my computer on it, and I got up, I was working at the computer, and I got up suddenly and turned real fast, and there was my brother Randy standing in the doorway, um, leaning against it with his arms crossed, just looking at me, and he saw me, and we both kind of jumped, and then he was gone. So if you want to give me a message from Randy, I know he was watching out for me. Not that it did protect me. I was... Bad things happen to people. You don't dwell on them. You deal with them when they come up. Then you move past. And I've got this thing called, I call the Teflon Mind. When bad thoughts cross my mind, I will just pretend that my brain is made of Teflon and the thought comes in and slides right out again, which is nice. But anyway, again, <laughs> I say that a lot. I was watching this medium tonight, this two gentlemen, and, uh, I couldn't wait down here any longer. I needed a breathing treatment. Oh, I needed a breathing treatment, and it was close to time to take medicine anyway, to take my uh, nighttime meds. I can't believe I have nighttime meds. I was not on anything but three pills for blood pressure, and that was after I turned 40. And uh, now I've got handfuls of pills to take in the morning and in the evening. And uh, I'm, I 
got upstairs. Jason came and, oh my God, I was having such a hard time breathing. Because I had put the, at the fly. I had put the uh, breathing treatment off so I could watch this medium. So I go upstairs. Jason comes, brings my stuff. Finally, I get to sit down on the bed. I took some morphine, which really helped. It's amazing how morphine helps with breathing. It really is. And pain. And I took my nighttime meds, and then I, well, I was taking my breathing treatment. I went back upstairs on the television, the Roku television that lets me stream YouTube and <laughs> they called my name wanted to know if I was still there but of course I wasn't I that was an interesting noise I had uh, got off my laptop down here and gone upstairs to do my medication things and so I missed getting a reading but then, you know, am I truly committed to the belief that there are mediums and psychics who can read you? I'd like to get a reading, a real reading. Not a tarot reading, because a tarot reading, it's all about um, <laughs> your love life. Honey, I ain't got no love life. I don't want a love life. I've got a battery operated boyfriend who keeps me from being a, a witch as long as I use it once every three months. Who knew? Everybody knows that sex is a big stress reliever. So, I don't need to know anything about new love coming into my life. I won't be here long enough to enjoy it. <clears throat> I know Bruce loves me, but he fights it every day with every ounce of his being. He doesn't really want to love me. That's all right. That's like saying, I don't believe in God. And God saying, that's okay, child, I believe in you. So I was alone almost the whole day. I did do a load of dishes in the dishwasher, but I'm going to wait till tomorrow to unload the dishwasher because I'm tired. Had a wonderful cup of tea this morning. Oh my goodness. Exactly the way I like it. Sweet, hot, and creamy. That was good. And then I had a plain pan hamburger patty. And some chips for dinner. And I wasn't going to eat after 5, five o'clock. But I stretched that until 6. So that uh, I could have a couple of desserts. Because you know, that's what I need. More food. They're going to have to pull me out of here with a bulldozer when I die. I'm trying to remind myself. Do not eat unless you're hungry. Why are you eating if you're not hungry? I'm not, I'm not hungry hardly ever at all. Saturday night, Friday night, the Saturday was an anomaly because I was really hungry. You dang flies. And I knew when I put those there, it was gonna cause a problem. Wouldn't be able to get to this quick enough. Um, but of course, it was like three in the morning. It was way after five. The first time I thought, "Oh my gosh, I'm hungry," just before I went to sleep. And when I woke up at, in the morning, I didn't eat. I did have a burger. I think at like seven. Got to have food on your stomach to take your pills. You know, the very last time I went to the hospital and was admitted and went by ambulance, very nice um, paramedic, and I agreed 
It, dying is the hard part. Death is easy. Death is done. You know, you've gone through the dying process. You're dead. It's all over. So death is easy. But it's the getting to it that's hard. And that will stick with me for the rest of my life. Because, you know, dying is a process. And at the end of it, you get to trans over and go transition and go over to the other side where I will no longer have trouble breathing. I can have a house of my own. Um, and I'm really tired of this body weighing me down. If I come back, if I'm reincarnated, I would like to be a skinny woman, please. An attractive skinny woman. I've learned all I need to know about being an unattractive fat woman. <laughs> I don't need any more lessons on how superficial the world can be and how your appearance can be a great judge of character because some people will just treat you like you're a rock on the ground and not pay any attention to you and that's okay um, some people will mock you which is not okay um, but I've got a thick enough skin that I don't care anymore I am what I am <clears throat> And then I have my grand, my grandmother, um, Lemon's body <laughs> from it's a German body. Nice and big, and you know, I mean, I love to cook. Don't do that much anymore. And you know, skinny people, fit people can enjoy food they just have learned how much that they should eat at a time and I'm only making this video today because I watched the YouTube thing where it says um, putting out content every day is much much better even if it doesn't get viewed as much is much much better than you know like say once a month or just recording a video and then not posting it which is what I am famous for um, but so I will try to make a video every day it's kind of hard when Bruce is here Bruce gives me a lot of content to talk about um, and you don't want to be talking anything about anybody when they can overhear you which brings to mind Denise that good people don't talk about people behind their backs that would be the thing to do to work on that girl so many things to work on and so it's been a very quiet day not much going on at all I had thought that I would do laundry today but I'm gonna wait and do that maybe tomorrow um, for my shower on Tuesday with Lisa And uh, that <clears throat> difficulty breathing that I had for, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then cleared up and was gone after Friday. After I took my shower and took my nap, I woke up and I'm like, I can breathe! How wonderful is that? But it feels like it's coming back and I don't know why. I don't know why. Anyway what I should have called my channel anyway so I'm going to be posting a lot more you are not obligated to watch you are not obligated obligated to like please don't share <laughs> because I know people will make fun of me but you know what I don't I don't think I care people people generally have been pretty awful to me for most of my life and it's my own problem it's my own fault because you know I am socially awkward I'm quite a chatty bitch when I want to be and uh, I'm not a pizza I can't make everybody happy you just here's my philosophy in life give what you can take what you need 
and leave the rest. But it's important that you give before you take. To me, it just feels more ethical. Anyway, it's going to take 40 minutes to upload this with the internet that I've got. So I should get this done and over with. And uh, thank you for watching if you are.